Today I'm going to teach you how to light composite 3D objects into a image or a video file using Cinema 4D and Redshift. Let's get started. Okay, let's show you how to composite something in Cinema 4D using the Redshift render engine. So let's set up a little scene and all we did is set up a sphere and a plane just right here. And the next thing we need is a background, a background in order to see uh, where we want to position these objects. So let's do that next. And the way I like to do it is create a new standard Cinema 4D material. And I'm going to uncheck reflectance and color and leave luminance because that's the only thing we need. Then I'm going to find a backplate that we can use. And so now we have a a uh, background for the luminance channel. We're going to create a background object. Now, if we put this material on the background object, we can see we have our uh, image right there. And the reason why this is helpful in our viewer is because now we can move our camera to match the correct perspective. So that's the first thing you want to do. It's also very important to make sure you undistort your footage so that the lines are all straight in your image or footage. This will make it so you can easily match the same distortion later in compositing. So now what we need to do is light this object with the same scene, but we're going to need a couple of things to do that. And the first thing we need is what's called a dome light. So here is my dome light for Redshift. I'm just going to click on this and now if you click right here on path we can find a reflective environment that matches this. So I have this HDR spherical map that looks like one of these and I'm going to hit yes and now let's take a look and see what's happening in our render. So now we can see we have this object here, but if we're comparing, we can see that we can't quite see our background yet. So we need to make sure that we uh, add that in. And over here on our dome light, there is a backplate check. So we're going to check that. And now we need to specify the same image that we used before. Now we have that same image that we had in our viewer. So the next problem is how do we eliminate this ground but keep these shadows so we can use it? And here's what we got to do. We need to click on our plane object, the one that's capturing our shadows. Right click, go down to redshift tags and then add a redshift object tag. Over in visibility, I always check this on. And then in matte, we're going to hit check this on as well. And we're going to need to turn the mat on. So now it's cutting, it's making that uh, plane completely disappear. But we still don't have those shadows. And if you look below, there is in fact a shadow enable. So if I click that, we now can see the shadows being shown from our sphere. So if I move my sphere off the ground, you'll see that there is now contact shadows and actual shadows that are being cast from the HDR. But we want to match the same light direction. We can see from this tree the light is really strong coming from behind. So we're going to use this as a source. So if I rotate my HDR light, we can see the shadow move. And we want to position this in a direction that would match the same as this tree, or at least coming from the same source. And I feel like that's looking pretty good. So there's a couple more things I want to do to make this look a little bit more realistic. And one of those things is how this object affects the ground plane or this environment and how the environment affects our object. So right now this plane is transparent, but we still can give it attributes that will affect the sphere. Let me demonstrate that for you. So let's create a material and we're going to put this redshift material on this plane. So let's just drag this on here. And the, what this is going to allow us to do is have reflections and actually bounce the same color onto this object. So if we look, let me hit render. Right now we don't have any reflections, but if I increase the reflection scale, you now see that we have this nice reflection from our object. 
And what you can do is now you can start messing with the reflection properties in order to get what you need. So if I increase the roughness, you'll see that now it's affecting the roughness in here, which is super helpful and definitely can add a lot more photorealism. We can add some uh, texture in here or whatever we want just to make this feel a lot more realistic. Another thing we can do is add a color on this plane that will bounce up and hit our object. To demonstrate this, I'm just going to throw a really bright red. And what's happening is this plane is invisible, but its properties are red, so it's bouncing this red color up and hitting our object. Now, you wouldn't want to do a color like that but you may want to do something that's closer to the ground or actually project the ground texture onto the object, which will also give you that more realistic look. So if I turn the weight of this down, you'll see that it's, it's really dark, but if I want to fill in some of those shadows with that same kind of warm light, I can do so by emulating this by just adding something in the diffuse and it will help us do that. Now I want to show you how this object can affect the ground. Right now we're capturing shadows and reflection, but you can also catch the diffuse or the color to bounce onto the floor. And I'm going to create a new redshift material, but this one's going to be for the sphere. Let me just drop this on the sphere. And there we go. So we have this uh, reflective object. But if I make this sphere green we can see there we go and what we can do on this plain object tag that we have is increase the diffuse scale and if you look it's really subtle but it makes a big difference is it's going to fill in some of the um, color from this object because the light hits an object and will reflect a color. So if I increase that, you'll now see that there's this green color being bounced onto the floor, which definitely helps for that photorealism. Now, in this case, um, if I wanted to make this look a little bit more real, there's a couple of really cool things you can do. And one simple trick is just adding some bump in since this is a bumpy road. So let's do that really quick. And I'm gonna use the uh, shader graph editor. So in the shader graph, what we first need to add is a bump map. And again, this is going on our plane. So let's just plug this bump map into overall bump input. And we're just going to do noise. I'm going to plug this in like so. So now you can see we're getting a little bit of that bump texture um, in here. And that can also help us sell that this is a uh, real street and that this thing's interacting with our environment a little bit more realistically. Now, if you want to get a little more advanced, what you can do is we can take this background image and project it, but into the bump map. So if you type in camera map here in the node graph editor and you plug this into the input of the bump map, and let's just paste that same uh, texture in the path. And now we need to specify the camera we want to use. So we would want to use the camera from this perspective. So they have this little camera picker and we're just going to click on the camera that we want. And the cool thing is now you can see how our bump is uh, being affected by the same perspective. So you can see it's going to get hit by certain things, uh, certain cracks in the same place, which can be uh, very, very helpful when trying to composite something like this. And another thing that I want to show you is um, creating some type of fall off in your reflections. So what we can do is add, let's go back to our uh, shader graph and you can type in Fresnel. And we'd want to plug this into the reflection and the weight. And this is just going to pretty much create a uh, gradient for where, um, how far your, uh, your reflections uh, go down. So we can slowly gr like mask it out, if you will, to a certain place. So if I toggle this 
you'll start seeing that it'll start getting cut off at a certain point. It's just a really helpful way to uh, make your reflections fall off a little bit nicer. And I probably would also increase the uh, roughness of these reflections. Okay, so we're starting to get something that's looking uh, pretty good and starting to feel like it's interacting with this environment a little bit more. Another really cool thing is you can keep adding lights in here to help emulate the uh, realism if you want. And you can use any of these uh, lights in Redshift. So let me just uh, bring this in here. And you'll see that now we have these lights that we can just add in if we feel like we're not quite uh, getting the HDR maybe isn't quite getting the look we want or uh, getting all the detail that we need. So this is super helpful uh, when doing stuff like this. And um, so you can just customize a lot of this stuff the way you feel looks best in your um, composite. Once we're really happy with maybe the look of this, the next thing you want to do is set it up so that you can actually um, bring this in with an alpha and recomposite this over that same image. Now, if you click on this tab right here, this is our alpha and it's all white right now, which means it's going to render out this background and we don't want that. The things we want are the sphere and the reflections and diffusion and all the stuff that's spilling out onto the ground. So I'm going to click on the alpha mode so we can kind of see what we're doing. And I know we need to uh, remove that background. So let's click on the dome light. And you can see they have this alpha channel replace. If I click on this and you bring it down to zero, you'll see that now our back plate has completely disappeared. But if I look at it in the RGB, you'll see it's still there. And that's super helpful. So you know that it will be gone in your render. If I crank this up to one, it's going to bring back uh, full um, opacity so you won't be able to use that so make sure that's at zero and then we can re put in that back plate now the plane is still there so that's another thing we need to look at so let's click on that redshift tag and you can see they have the same thing here so we can actually turn on the effect alpha and now you can see we have uh, these are some shadows and different reflections as well and if I turn this on and off, you'll see that now it's capturing that stuff. And if you turn this alpha all the way down, it's actually going to hide all of the properties that we just put in. So you don't want to do that. So make sure when you're, you're setting this up to render that your background is transparent, but your reflections and everything else remain. At this point, you'd be ready to render out your scene and bring it into your favorite compositing software or Photoshop. Now I want to talk to you about render settings and optimizing your render settings so that you are um, well prepared for compositing. So let's click up here in the render settings for Redshift and we're going to talk about some of these things and some ways that can help you guys get cleaner renders. So if I do a preview render right now, just by clicking this, we'll be able to see how this thing's looking. Now. If I just did it this way, it does take a little bit longer, and that's because it's having to calculate all the space outside. But if you're wanting to check certain areas, it's smart to use the render region. And this is a great way to just check certain areas, especially if you're looking for noise, um, and just check those areas to see how they're looking. So we're just going to select this area and hit render. And now this thing goes a million times faster because we're only rendering a certain area, but we still can check and see if this is looking good. The next thing you can do is click on this, take a snapshot. So what this is going to do is snapshot just um, this render really quick so we can um, update and then compare. So right now we have four min samples. So I'm going to turn this up to 16 and this one up to 32 and I'm going to hit render again. Now I'm going to take another snapshot and now I have something to compare to. So here's one and there's two. So this is our new one and this is our old, our first one. And you'll see also the time difference so you'll know how long your render is taking. This one took just a, hardly any more time and you can see that it was cleaning it up quite a bit more. This one didn't look as good and now it's looking a little bit better. So let's optimize this and, or make this look even better. So I'm going to do 32 and 64 
And let's go back to our uh, render and let's hit render again. And let's see if we can clean up even more of this noise. Okay, let's take another snapshot. So now we have this one, this one, and this one. So you can see oh, the more samples you give it, the better it gets. So here's the first one, the second, and the third. So it's starting to get uh, better over time. And if you see this line right here, that's actually not from the render. That's from the uh, render region. So it's, it's rendering that whole image and this new area. So you'll have to really focus in on what we're looking at right here. But you definitely can see a uh, increase in quality as we increase the samples. And our time difference is going up not too much, not enough for me to uh, feel like it's making a really big difference. So I may crank this one up to uh, 64 and uh, 128. So let's try this again and see how this one looks. And let's add another snapshot. So let's compare our newest one, this one, to our last one. You're starting to see it clean up more and more. And let's compare this newest one to the first one. So you can see a very large difference between the two. And the time difference, you know, it's, it's about doubled. So it's a little bit more. But uh, for quality, it definitely looks much, much better. So I feel like that's going to be enough um, samples since we're going to be pretty far away from this object. Uh, but that's just a really great way when you guys are um, increasing your samples and stuff. Make sure you do it. You can do it that way. Another thing you can do to increase your render speed and your quality is go into the override samples. So this allows you to just increase samples in certain areas. So for example, let's go back to, let's reset this to default. And maybe we can see, let's just go, uh, let's click here, and we're just going to override the samples in the reflection. And instead of replacing them, we're gonna scale them by four. And I'm going to hit render. So now we're not doing all the samples, but we are doing reflections. And we'll take another snapshot. So let's compare this snapshot to the first one. So you can see in the reflections, at least, it did clean up a lot of those fireflies. And we could keep increasing this, or or you could replace the samples, but this is just scaling it. So if I did eight, and we go back in here, I'm gonna take another snapshot. Let's take a look at this one versus our first one. Definitely an increase in getting rid of some of those fireflies, and we still didn't increase the samples overall. But there's so many different um, things in here, so you could go through and increase the samples for each of these um, and then just test out certain areas. If you're having problems with reflections or, or your lights or anything like that, you can do that right here. So we could even cr increase the uh, light samples. So let's do that. And I'm going to hit render. So we're scaling them by four. And we'll take another snapshot. So let's take a look at this one versus that. It's definitely better, but um, and we're starting to see some better quality stuff overall, but not too much, um, not enough for me to care. So what I'm going to do, and again, this is just so you guys can know how to um, optimize your renders and clean these things up. But I'm going to go back to what I had originally, which was 64 by 128. I felt like that was my um, best looking one. And this time I'm gonna turn off the render region and I'm gonna render this entire image out and kind of see what this is looking like. Okay, you can see our render is over and it did take 21 seconds to render, but we can see the result is really good. It's nice and clean. I'm not seeing any fireflies or anything that I'm too concerned about. And our alpha looks nice and clean as well. So that's how you kind of set up um, some of your render stuff and making sure that it looks nice. So next thing is we just have to set up the uh, file path and make sure that that's looking good. All right, so if you go to output, um, the first thing I need to do is I'm just going to do this current frame. So I'm just going to set up this current frame so it doesn't do an animation. Um, here's your resolution and all that fun stuff. So you can set up that right here, your frame rate. Again, I'm just doing an image right now, so I'm okay with this. Uh, then you want to go into the save and you want to do a regular image. If you are doing multi-passes, yes, you'd have to set up the multi-pass setup. Um, but in this case, we are not. And you need to make sure that alpha channel is selected. 
That way we do get that alpha channel. So make sure that is um, selected. You could get a straight alpha or a separate alpha, anything like that. I'm just gonna check the alpha channel right there. Another file format that I like to use is the OpenEXR. It will give us um, the best resolution at 32-bit. That way we, don't, we can retain a lot of the dynamic range and information that we need. So from there, you just wanna set up your file path and um, hit the render button and you should be ready to go. Okay, I hit render and here's our uh, rendered image. And if I go over into the layer, you can actually see the alpha made it as well. So we can see that this is our, our beauty or our image and we have this nice alpha. So this is gonna help us be able to composite this over our background image. So let's jump over into compositing software and show you how that's done. All right, so here we are in Nuke, and I'm going to show you how to composite this thing together. This is just going to be so something really, really simple, nothing too crazy, but I want to show you uh, kind of the workflow. So um, right here we've imported the, uh, the rendered out image, and this is what it will look like. And over here is our back plate. And what we need to do is we need to uh, first check that we have our alpha. So I'm going to hit A, and you can see we have all of that, uh, our shadows and reflections and all that good stuff. And you can see right there. Um, but right now, if I, let's say, did a transform and started moving this thing around, you can see it's moving the entire background with it. So that's not going to work. So what you have to do is what's called a pre-molt in, uh, right here in uh, Nuke. And this uh, basically cuts out that background for us. Or it, it basically applies the alpha to the RGB. And then we have this uh, background and we're going to uh, reformat it so it's the uh, 1920 by 1080 same resolution so now this and this should line up correctly and i will simply merge these together and a merge uh, is basically a composite mode so uh, think of these each that's a layer this is a layer and this is where they meet so as you go down a nuke you start adding more layers so anything in between your pre-molt and your merge, you could add in your grade node. So we could just, uh, if this is too bright, maybe bring it down. Or maybe we want to push a little bit more uh, yellow in this. And in our gamma as well, maybe we want to push a little bit more you know, warmth there as well and lift it up. And then you could add a transform. Now, the transform is... Um, is going to do some weird stuff because if I look at this alone, you can see those shadows actually picked up part of the background. So in this compositing case, you can't do that. Um, you would have to make sure that in Cinema 4D, it is exactly where you want. Now, if you want to learn more about um, multi-passes and setting up um, different layers, you can go check out my VFX crash course at vfxcrashcourse.com to learn how to um, create an entire scene using multi-passes properly. So with that, we can just see that, you know, I'm adding some simple grades. And one thing that a lot of people do with CG is blur it because there's off, you know, there's something with CG being too sharp. So I always like to add in a blur so we could just slightly uh, soften this thing up so it doesn't feel as crisp because cameras don't um, shoot nearly as sharp as our CG renders. So it's always good to kind of um, soften things up a little bit. Um, you could do a glow if you wanted. You don't have to, um, you know just fun things like this, but this is where you're able to kind of add in your your own creativity. Um, and always at the very end, once these are merged together, um, this is just kind of a, a good process or a good thing to have, is um, when you do CG or anything integrating, integrating stuff, is you need to match grain. Um, so this plate, uh, I don't know if it has, maybe all the grain got removed. It looks like it's pretty clean. So, what you want to do at the end of all of your comps is match your grain or add grain back in. So um, this is just this should become a very common thing when doing CG. Um, I do need to add one more thing to make sure this thing is merging properly. Okay, so now if I turn the grain on and off, you can see we're getting grain in there. This is obviously a little too intense. 
I would probably never go this intense, but when you add grain back in, um, if you do this to your matte paintings or anything like that, this is definitely going to help things feel a lot more real. So that's just a little trick when you're compositing uh, your CG elements. Add grain back in. Uh, first remove it, remove distortion, and then add grain and all the dirty stuff back in. It'll just make your thing feel more alive. Well, that's it, guys. I hope this tutorial was super helpful. Hopefully, you guys can composite some really cool things. Go out, shoot something with your phone, track it in Cinema 4D, add in some cool stuff with um, using C4D and Redshift, and I'd love to see what you guys create, so share it with me. Um, I am VFX under dash central on my Instagram, so go ahead and give that a follow. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. I do live streams um, every week or maybe every other week, so we'll just see how it goes. And uh, thank you for watching.